Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Cookies Enabled. Today we're launching submarines into Lake Charlevoix. This is going to be an awesome one so stick around and let's learn something new. So a few days ago when I was riding home from work, I looked over at the park and saw what looked like mini submarines. Now I had to check this out. So I rode over, um, talked with a gentleman who was getting his ready for a moment and he recommended I come back the next day. And so I did. That next day there were about six submarines out there and I had a chance to talk to the founder of psubs.org, John Wallace. And in a, just a moment, I'm going to basically roll my footage and let him explain a little more of what P-Subs is and give us a little tour of some of these submarines and how they work. So stick around. So how did you get into building these? Like what? Well, usually people that are interested in this are scuba divers, typically that want to go deeper. So scuba, you're limited to 120, 130 feet for about 10 minutes, unless you want to do compression, you know, compression type stuff, which we don't want to do. So the, the solution to that is to get a vessel like this. Now, this sub here can do 350 feet. I think this one here can do 1,000. 1,000, that's a lot of pressure. Right, but you've got this pressure hull that's protecting you. And so it allows you to go down deep and stay long. These subs can stay down up to 72 hours because they carry life support, oxygen and carbon dioxide. I noticed uh, an oxygen tank down there. And he's got scuba tanks here to uh, uh, give him his ballast control, adding the air to bring him up to the surface. So the long-term ones, do they also have like air scrubbers in a way? Yes. For yep. Okay. Yep. Um, like, do you know what, what type they use? Like, is it the, uh, what did they use on Apollo? Was it hydrazine or? No, we're using a typically soft no water. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah, the uh, spacecraft used a uh, different chemical that was good for very cold, cold, for, uh, cold uh, temperatures. Uh, this is, they use the same kind of stuff that a, uh, a, a diver would use okay. for a rebreather. I'm not, I will uh, so can you tell me a little bit about uh, PSUBS.org, that the organization that you started, or how that started? PSUBS started in 1996 for exactly the reason I kind of described. Uh, we were scuba diving, it was cold, used up a lot of air, didn't have a lot of bottom time. So I figured there must be a better way. And it just so happened that I knew someone that was interested, and that person knew someone who was interested in submarines, and someone else knew something, and it just grew over time. And now we're an international organization. We have members across the world. And we get together like this once or twice a year. We have technical conventions where we just talk about uh, our projects and, and how we designed them and what we're doing with them. And then we have an expedition like this, we call this an expedition, where we actually go out and dive. And so at this expedition, we're diving the Kuka rack out here in uh, Lake Charlevoix. So we've got a sub from California, Texas, Virginia, uh, two subs from Michigan, and uh, uh, Virginia, and uh, Indiana. How big is this organization these days? Like how many members are yeah, we, active? We average about two to 230 members. Oh, wow. So it's, it's, a, it's a niche organization. You know, you've got to have a special desire to want to do this. And it's not cheap. But uh, again, if you want to do some good underwater exploring, just have fun, this is the way to do it. And so the KUKA wreck brought you to Charlevoix? Yes. Yep. We got a local contact here. Uh, in Michigan, and so we're able to have a place where we can resupply our electricity and air and things of that nature. So it helps to have someone local on site to help pick out places to eat and, and stay and stuff like that. I can imagine. I can but, imagine. You know, Michigan's got nice water, it's clear water. It's, it's, we've been up here before too, we've dove, dove in Lake Michigan itself. 
but uh, no, it's a nice area, so we like coming up here. It's really cool. So, like you said, you've got people from all over, uh, just, it's like a hobby, different professions. I feel like there's probably a heavy engineering aspect to a lot of these yes, there is. people. Uh, <clears throat> but again, there's, there's enough people in the group that can help you uh, if you don't have a lot of knowledge about it. But it takes time to build that knowledge. And that's what the, that was the whole purpose of the group, is that when we started, nobody knew everything about a submarine. And it was hard to find information back then. This was before uh, the internet was popular or anything, back in 1996. And so you could only find what you could find in uh, libraries, and there wasn't much material. But there were guys out there who knew something. And this guy knew something that you didn't know, and you knew something that he didn't know. And so by sharing the information, you both knew it. And, and as you grew, more and more people could contribute and learn from you. So it really worked out well. Someone might be an electrician and another yes. a welder and yep. one exactly. an engineer that understands the exactly. physics of pressure vessels and all of that. And then the scuba um, backgrounds as well. Exactly. Described it perfectly. <laughs> uh, show me what we're looking at here. Done a lot of other, you know, this is a Minn Kota motor. I took it down the, took it down the metal. Just a regular uh, trolling motor that we uh, modify with either oil compensation or air co compensation to uh, make sure it can run into water. This is a ballast tank. So this is like a life preserver. There's one here, there's one in the front. You put air in here and you float. When he wants to dive, he's got a valve near the conning tower that lets the air out through this hose. And as the air escapes, the sub goes down. You get it to basically a level of neutral buoyancy. Yes, exactly. So that's, the, that's the target. Just like scuba, you want to try to get neutrally buoyant. And then you can move up and down as you want, and forward and backwards. And so he's got some additional uh, buoyancy here that he can add in. He uses trolling uh, buoys like this, uh, orange buoy here, and stuff in here. So depending on the weight of the person and the sub, he can adjust how much points he has by using this. Yeah, he was, he actually uh, helped This sub over the here uh, so after I had has aluminum blast, tanks that basically do the same. Most of the welds, make sure they were, at least look like they were all, all have full the same penetration, right. and they look good, uh, and then we re Basic them. elements, but as you can see, well, completely different designs, depending on what you, how you want to design it. And they said these are all custom made, custom manufactured. Yeah. He's got an aft one and a floor one. So most of the controls here are like manual, like manual linkages, yes. not so much electronic. Or yeah. yeah, he's got some electronics. He's got a uh, a depth sounder, and, uh, and here's down his, uh, here. This what's is, that tank? This is a CO two uh, absorbent, and so this is what takes the carbon dioxide out of the cabin air as he's diving. And it looks like the battery is underneath it for yes. powering. Yep. His batteries are right there, and that's what's powering his motors. Main breaker, I see. The electrical switches stuff. Switches for all of the equipment. Is that is something more comfy to sit on? Yeah, this is his seat. It's just a, just like a swing seat. He'll connect it. There you go, guys. Here. A view from inside the front. And that's all of the pressure rate valves and all of that yep if you look this green this green valve right here is where he adds his oxygen so he adds oxygen here and he takes the out the co2 that he breathes here and that's what allows them to stay under for so long and i see there's a mouthpiece there is that like emergency? That's an emergency okay yep. links directly to the the scuba tank uh, okay so if it should flood or if uh Maybe something smokes or something, uh, the batteries or something. He's got a, uh, a mouthpiece that he can breathe from. Fans to keep cool and all of that. So uh, what about like the safety uh, regulations on these? How these, these are classified as a boat. And so it's, it's just as if you had a 12-foot dinghy or a 24-foot powerboat. A boat is a boat, and these are the 
Coast Guard classifies these boats, so they have the same rules as uh, any other boat that would be on the water. What about in terms of like the pressure vessel, though? I feel like that would have to be regulated to some extent. It, it, it doesn't have to be for recreation. Okay. Now, now a tourist sub, like the Atlantis out Hawaii, okay, there you're going to have certification, the Coast Guard going to have to certify it and all that stuff. More for insurance right. purposes? But for recreation purposes, uh, there is no certification required. Now, we do encourage our members to build towards uh, certain standards and certifications. But it's too expensive to actually get that certification. It would cost you $150,000 to get certification. Because you need an engineer that inspects every little piece and part. Does anybody in the group have that certification? Like, if they. I don't think so. I don't okay. think. Uh, I'm not sure about that. We may have one or two that have certification. But uh, for the most part, people don't certify. So you said some of these, like the one behind me, it can go down to, you said about 100 feet. This one is 350. The one behind us is 1,000. Alex, yes, how deep can you go with this? 1,000. 1,000. What's the deepest that any of these have ever went? Oh, well, the R300 over there has been to 400 feet. Okay, John, I'm gonna have to jump in your way, sorry about okay. it. Yeah, we'll get out of this guy's way, let him work on his... He's been 400 feet. I'm not sure how far Alec has been, um, but we've got a guy out west that has a 3,000 foot sub as well. Wow. He's building a 3,000 foot. So you've been all over the world, you said, with all of this. We have been all, well, we have... We have people all. People, we have members worldwide. Okay. But we mainly stay in the U.S. The European guys have their own little thing over in Europe, and, uh, but we can all stay in contact with each other, obviously through the internet. What's the coolest place you've ever been down in? Oh, like your favorite? Well, I would say uh, this is a good place here. Lake Charlevoix is a good place. This is probably going to become my favorite. We went to Lake Tahoe. We hooked up with a university out there that was doing some investigation of some invasive shrimp in Lake Tahoe. And so we got together with them and took their research scientists down on the submarines. You know? And that was exciting as well. Everything's done my way. That's awesome. But for the most part, it's just, it's, it's like scuba. It's just being underwater and enjoying being underwater and, and in a much more fascinating way, I'd say. <laughs> but, but just exploring and having that feeling of exploring things. That's the attraction. That's cool. So this one's called R300 because it's rated to 300 feet. Uh, but he's headed down to 400, I believe, as for testing. Wow. Yes. Here's a good view of the motor. This is a, a regular Minn Kota motor, and these are his lights that are attached to it. And he made these lights. This is a handmade. There you go. Very nice. And this is yours? No. Oh, this is his. Let's read this. He's from Texas. And uh, now, now these, these let him go up and down. So these, these control his up and down movement. And in the back, he's got two thrusters in the back. These are these are all hundred pound thrusters. And he uses these like a tractor. So if, if he's got this one going, he's going to turn this way. He's got this one going, he's going to turn this way. Because they both will go straight. So these are fixed units as opposed to move. You'll see that like the uh, the green one we looked at has a movable motor, but these are fixed motors. And that's just personal preference. Some guys like fixed motors, some guys like movable motors. So some of some people will have ones that rotate yeah. uh, versus yes. that fixed position that just each one deals with only one exactly. axis. Now this this one's unique because this is a this is a fiberglass outer body. Now inside there's a pressure hull underneath. 
this fiberglass is a pressure hull, just like these other cells. And that's what protects them from the pressure. And that's what allows them to die so deep. So some of the other ones are just single hull, but relying on the strength of the metal to hold oh, the pressure then? He's just, he's just put a, a pretty body around the outside of the shell. Definitely pretty, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he originally, originally he used a, uh, a, a, a water jet engine in here, uh, and he swallowed it, but it didn't work so good, he didn't like it, so he switched over to this, this kind of thing. By just redesigning that end cone. Yep. Yep. And changed, yeah, changed the motor belt. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody's interested in getting involved with this, what should they do? What's their What's the first step if someone said, I want to build a sub? First step is to go to psubs.org and join the mailing list. It's free. And just make contact so that uh, you, you can answer questions and you can get involved that way. Very easy. Fantastic. No pressure. Well, thank you very much for answering some of the questions. And uh, like I said, everybody, we'll get some footage going, have one of these guys explain a bit of what's happening, and uh, ignore the giant tractor behind me that's making noise. <laughs> okay, so that was John Wallace there giving us the tour, giving us some more information on these subs. And I'm just going to go ahead and roll some of the extra clips that I got throughout the day so you can get a better idea of just what it was like being out there. Um, and I wasn't the only one. They had a crowd of maybe 20 to 30 people from the area. I think most people just saw these subs in the parking lot, wondered what they were, and came down to watch. And they definitely put on a show. It was an absolutely fantastic experience. So I'll just let the rest of these clips uh, roll through here for a moment, and that'll be all. Can we go back for a little bit? So the one we're looking at right now, everybody, is named R300, uh, apparently named because it is rated to 300 feet. And as you can tell, he's from Texas. And they're getting ready to drop it into the lake. Let's check this out. Okay, everybody, so I hope you enjoyed that episode. I want to give a really big thank you to John and everybody with psubs.org. They were fantastic today with uh, letting me just film and get some inside video and ask a bunch of questions about these subs. As you can see, we got uh, one that's barely visible right behind me. It was a fantastic opportunity to be able to see this in a little city like this. I didn't expect it when I found them yesterday, but they've been wonderfully accommodating, happy to explain as much. So if you're interested in this, or if you just want to talk about it, or thinking of building your own sub, as expensive as it is, head on over to psubs.org. We're going to post a link in the description and just uh, ask questions, see what they say, and check it out. It was a fantastic opportunity. I'm really happy that I got a chance to see all of this today. So yeah, check them out. Uh, remember, uh, hit that like button, subscribe, turn on no notifications. We post a video every week and we're gonna be rolling out some new stuff with our podcast soon. So stick around. I hope you learned something new. I know I did. <laughs>